This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. the get geeky get techie it is the awesome cast i am mike sorg at sorgatron on the twitter and it is episode 415 of the awesome cast and uh we're right here in the sorgatron media studios in the beachview neighborhood of pittsburgh pa live on the facebook live with a bunch of people joining us out there with me in studio is john chichilla he's the gadget guru over at big bank international esquire and he's updating my old android phone we're on we're on optimizing app twenty seven of one oh three. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. For the second time. So you're on your second round. <laughs> if you want to know why he's updating my Android phone, you can uh check out <laughs> on Patreon uh the awesome cast gold for this week, where we talked about that. Uh we talked about um uh, Crazy Kraus at the at the build conference and, and some Ignite. other things. Ignite. Ignite build. No, ignite Light builds on, in the builds in build the, the ignite. builds in the spring. I oh geez. ignites in the fall. Just I the part the partner I conferences. I can't keep up. And then there's the one in China that's like coming and up. Then, and then like like Facebook. They is have like, like four big ones. Facebook a year. is like the F8, which confused me with like the D26, which I think is the Disney one. And then there's like the G8, and then there's the G20. There's the G20. Uh, that's the government one. Yeah, yeah. I think the GA is the one that screwed up our town for a little bit. Uh, but anyways, that's a whole other podcast that is not on this network. Uh, but it is the Awesome Cast. Check us out at awesomecast.com. Email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. Follow us on the Facebook page and please the Facebook group uh, so you can be part of the conversation and, uh, and even contribute some stories that we'll use in the show. Um, subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch the video versions on Facebook and YouTube. Please uh, uh, like and subscribe those as well. All that feedback or sharing it or anything like that, if you like it and want to get help us get in front of more people and help grow the awesome audience out there, we really do appreciate that. Um, especially, especially if you are over on the iTunes, that seems to help out a lot too. We are streaming Saturday mornings on our friends, the Rivers Edge PGH.com, 9 a.m. Saturday mornings is the latest episode. And also our uh, other streaming partners on the West Coast, the 405media.com is carrying us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern. And if you want to be part of the studio audience or if you have any interest in reaching our audience here on the show with advertising, you have producer Missy over there keeping us straight at AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. First of all, at the Coffee Club $5 level, our friends Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore. And at the Fan of Show dollar level, Michael Fedora. Thank you so much. Literally helping keep the lights on here in the studio. You can be a Patreon supporter as well at patreon.com slash awesomecast. And I know the uh, it's the first. That means the Patreon payments are going through. I know I got the receipts for a handful of shows that I'm still supporting. Um, and uh, thank you, everybody, that is still supporting us. And, and, and all those guys have been there for a, a good while. Uh, if you'd like to, if you're getting value out of the show, give us a little as a dollar a month. And we really do appreciate it and give you a shout out here every week. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Chilla, I'm coming off of a PodCon high. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> is that is is that like a uh, pod camp high? Well, no, 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 no. Pod the pod camp high is more like like sleep deprivation and and like you know questioning your your choices in your life. Um, this is less of that. Okay. <laughs> no, this was a um, this event that was uh, uh, I, I think you know, mostly a brainchild of Brian Crawford over there at River's Edge. Uh, we we were. You know, we kind of co-promoted this thing. Uh, we did the technology. And like I said, I kind of, well, if there's anything weird tonight, it's because uh, half the studio went with us to the stage over at Spirit Lounge Sunday night uh, for us to do a live podcast and be a part of International Podcast Day live feed, which part of it didn't work. And we ended up having to do it over Hangout on the phone anyways. But still, it got out there and it seemed to, to turn out pretty, pretty well. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it. There were live um 
There were live uh, uh, podcasts by uh, Snack, which is the Carnegie Science Center podcast. Okay. So I got to meet those guys and talk with them. Um, the uh, the 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 um, uh, I think it was like uh, what's Aaron Kleiber's uh, the Dad Business podcast. I think it is. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, the uh, Jagoff podcast. We did a uh, iteration of the Wrestling Mayhem show. Um, there was a uh, Why Do We podcast panel that uh, Brian. Uh, led with uh, myself was on it. Uh, Katie was on it, representing Scarehouse and an awesome cast, uh, and a, and a few other friends, Mike Sasson uh, as well. Um, B movies, B, bad B movie podcast. That's the one I got in my head, and for some reason in my head, I think I mushed it with the Dad Business podcast. So now it's like the B Dad Business <laughs> podcast. I, I look up Aaron Kleiber, you'll you'll find his stuff. Um, and uh, but no, it was a lot of fun. It was cool to do that and and be able to. Kind of put that stream out there and see some people uh, get into that. Um, but but there was also it was a con of sorts. We had uh, a lot of um, um, representation, and I'll try to pull up the video here in just a moment. Sorry, we also have another computer that I'm trying to sort out here. Um, we had a room full, of, and everybody had a table, and they had their podcast and met other podcasters. And I think there's some people, you know, while we had the main stuff up on the on the on the stage. They also, uh, a lot of them were podcasting from their tables, too. Like, I didn't know the Cinema Psycho show was completely talking about Ghostbusters 2 over there. <laughs> if I did, less would have gotten done on stage. We had live music. Um, you know, there's beer was flowing. I think they had, was that a food truck outside they had? I believe, or was that just like the food, the food tent? But they had, they had, they had some fresh food there, like burritos and, um, um, melon balls and, 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 uh, and stuff like that. Uh, mac and cheese, mac and cheese and burgers. Um, those were, I know, I know I had, uh, thankfully producer Missy made sure I was well fed, uh, while I was on the show, uh, doing my thing. So no, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Jay Cooper, who's, uh, joined us and actually he's from right up the road here. Um, which I felt really bad when our back of our car was too full to give him a ride to the same neighborhood we reside in. Um, uh, but <laughs> he emceed the entire night and, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was really cool. I met a lot of shows. It was amazing how many podcasts, like when the, we, we put the, the form out and start people started signing up we're just like we haven't heard of half these shows right and they're all mm -hmm. here in pittsburgh and how, how many how many sh how many people were there because i know like dan greenwald was there and he, yeah yeah he does the the pilot episode yeah the pilot the pilot season and he does pilot the, season, and then he does uh the comic, comic book, book pit. pit how many people like you and dan are doing Multiple, multiple shows. shows i didn't know and again i didn't get to walk around and talk to anybody because i was busy with the stage stuff mm -hmm. um i think for the most part people were representing individual podcasts okay um but i'm not sure i'm honestly not sure mm -hmm. um they're, they're, but there's a lot there i was like oh that's a cool table i need to talk to him and just never had a chance to because i was just involved with the stage and make sure everything was running up there um but still like it sounds like i did i did get to meet a lot of people um that uh that you know i think there's a lot of people this was an interesting phenomenon like there's people that i met sunday that i thought i met before but realized i've only been in the same room as them <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason and never made a connection mm -hmm. um that was a really weird phenomenon that, that that we had out of that too um but no it was a lot of fun oh bold technically bold pittsburgh because they had Bold nights out and bold sports representing over there, so that that counts. They are the other crazy ones. Um, no, no, but it was a really fun night, and um, I know not everybody could can make it because of obligations, and there was a Steelers game and everything like that. Um, but I'm, it, but you know, it was International Podcast Day. We got to be a part of that, and I think it was a fun, unique. I know you know talking with Brian, he was keeping an eye on the the stream because they did like I think about twenty four hours of streaming from around the world for International Podcast Day, and. Um, and uh, it, he, it seems that like we were the only ones that had this kind of concept going on, right? Like this this bigger event going on around it, right? Um, so it was really cool that we got to represent like that. Like I said there's some videos. Um, if you want to go check out the live podcast, um, there's a highlight video that we played here on the video version of the show that's over on the Sorgatron Media Facebook page and YouTube. And we tweeted it and Instagrammed it and everything. So you can kind of see um, what the event looked like. And uh <laughs> Maybe we'll do it next year as well. Yes? Like, or if you're in the chat room, and uh, those are linked as well over on our Facebook page if you're with us live. 
So, um, yeah, that, that was my awesome thing. Is that it was just really cool to see that community come together, and 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 we've been seeing that community grow in the Pittsburgh Podcasters Facebook group as well. You know, and I think that's where a lot of those people came from. Like, like I think some of them um, maybe aren't as out there on that group, but mm-hmm. they showed up for this, and everybody had a table. Like, I was kind of, I, I was kind of worried. I'm like, is everybody gonna like? Is it gonna be? Is somebody gonna bring a table and have their business cards? And that's maybe about it. But everybody had a great looking, you know, setup, mm-hmm. and it felt very Comic Con-y, You know, like like I, yeah, I talked to Dan uh, from Comic Book Pet. He was in here last night uh, when the internet didn't work, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I asked them, I was like, did, you know, it feels like, like, I imagine this is how like a small press con, comic book con would feel. And he said, he said it's pretty much in line with something like that. That's cool. So it's a bunch of creatives just getting in a room and, and seeing, seeing what happens, seeing what everybody else is doing. Not in like an educational setting, like a pod camp would be. Mm-hmm. Um, and also it was nice going to a podcast conference where people didn't tell me I needed to write a book, start an online class, um, <laughs> and, and do all that kind of stuff that really left a bad taste in my mouth in the long run. Um, so it's cool. I, it's a really cool vibe. It's cool to see that there's a scene here in Pittsburgh around this. I really enjoy the, the Pittsburgh podcasters group. I don't always contribute, but I read through a lot of it. Doug check is out, the MVP over there, by check, the way. Check out a lot of that content. And then mm-hmm. it's interesting too, because I feel like that group really tries to help each other out. If someone's looking yes. for how to do something yes. on, on the cheap or, you know, looking for equipment, um, recommendations, Group's extremely, extremely helpful. Absolutely. So I, I, I hope it continues to thrive and grow. Absolutely. So, Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So, Microsoft made some announcements. What? Yes. They had a whole afternoon slash evening of announcements. And we'll get probably to some of them in the, in the, in the bottom half of the show. But um, one of the things they announced really excited me. You know, I'm, I'm big on mobile. Um they and and samsung i'm not gonna lie so the technology they announced was windows 10 there's gonna there's a my phone app that's coming and you're going to be able to at least on android respond to text messages and easily pull over pictures and you can you're gonna be able to do some of the some limited stuff with ios because obviously apple likes to lock everything down inside their walled garden um but there was an old technology on that was unique to samsung devices that let you plug you didn't even have to plug your device in but you could bring your device up in like a window and completely remote control it Hmm. um samsung has since gotten rid of that capability they called it side sync um this is coming to windows 10 and it looks like it's going to be android cross-platform you're actually going to be able to bring up your android device almost like in a remote desktop type window and completely remote control the device from your from your PC. Personally, I think this is awesome because you then don't if your phone goes off and vibrates and you get a, a, a message, there's no context switch to go over, unlock my device, find the app that that alerted me, go into the app, do whatever I need to do, and then come back to my PC. It's now just an alt tab away, hmm. and you can completely control your device. I did not get to see the live demo and they didn't go into from what I've read, they didn't go very in depth on this, but in the screenshot, you can see they're showing Snapchat up there and someone's responding on Snapchat. Um, to me, this is, this is big. This, this kind of bridges that gap, um, to running those types of of applications on your PC, even though it's kind of powered by your phone. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, what I'm interested in also is, will they get to the point where they can do screen resizing and you can make the the app kind of like a, a typical rectangular window and put more content on the screen, kind of like you can with a tablet rotating it. Um, really interesting to see where they go with this. And I really feel like it, it brings in kind of that integrated approach that Apple takes with putting FaceTime and iMessage and a number of those applications on the desktop or uh, Google Chrome devices can run some Android apps on the device. I, I think this helps really bridge bridge that and also improves productivity and workflow, which is where I think we're going to see continued strides from Microsoft is really in that how can we make you more productive, allowing you to 
get more stuff done with a frictionless experience, and I think that it's going to be big. Hey, I love this that they're you know you used to get cool stuff like this, but you know it's like but you got to buy a Windows phone, and it just doesn't. You know, it doesn't. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't a good value proposition, right? Yeah. For people to jump into that ecosystem. I hope they can. I hope they can bridge the gap with with some of the Apple capabilities. We'll have to, the only time will tell on that one and what Apple lets them do. But Android being a little more open, I think it it provides a very nice seamless experience awesome. across those devices. Awesome. So be looking forward to that, and uh, I'm sure you'll get your hands on that when it comes out as well yeah i'll be able to hook up one of the you'll be able to hook up your android device too my my android device that's updating over there oh boy i just don't want to stop overheating when i'm playing video games uh anyways i'm gonna give a shout out we mentioned them a little bit it's post podcon so shout out to our friends uh at comic book pit it's pittsburgh's longest running comic book podcast it brings fun conversational atmosphere uh to both longtime comic book fans and new readers and covers comic related news across all media types from movies televisions insider industry news to reviews of weekly comic books you can find out more at comicbookpit.com a member right here at the sorgatron media network and uh they come in here and uh you know they're talking about stuff they're talking about iron fist for their uh, upcoming episodes last night uh things that i am really bad about getting caught up on i still need to finish last season of everything cwdc uh we got it halfway through um and they were talking to iron fist so i usually have to cover my uh, cover my ears uh to avoid spoilers because i'm I'm really late on that kind of stuff but no uh great stuff there and it was cool seeing them uh represent on at podcon as well uh so go check them out comicbookpit.com it's pit as in pittsburgh in case you were curious and you never know we had a we had a fun member event with them um not too long ago uh down at new dimension comics up in, uh, let's say up in elwood city actually uh, we had a special access as fans, fans and friends of the podcast to dollar comics that not everybody gets. Uh, the 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 f- legendary New Dimension Comics basement, and I got a nice stack of stuff from there. I tell you where Katie got her um, uh, Dinobots comic book last week when she was on the show. Chilla, it's finally the 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 we're finally everything is coming together. Dog and cats living together. Sony, let on cross-play on the Sony PlayStation 4. What? I didn't even hear about this one. Is, this has come out. Uh, Riz, of course, our resident video gamer, let us know about it. And excuse me as I awkwardly look at the new lead position computer over here. Yes, they are finally allowing cross-play on the PlayStation 4 after resisting for so long. Um, they, ah, uh, no, I don't care about my ad blocker. Go away. Did they, did they say why? Um, I'll get to that in just a moment. But uh, uh, the biggest thing is Fortnite, of course. It begins today, they say, when they, uh, uh, they, they, they have an open beta for Fortnite that'll let PS4 players go up against Xbox One, Switch, and others. Man, Kot- Kotaku is very bad on the pop-ups, by the way. <laughs> I can't even read the damn article without uh without stuff popping up at me but uh no that's 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 a big deal so maybe you know our, our long national nightmare is over and uh we can move on with that um and of course riz is really big about reminding me that he gets to play spider-man and i don't because everybody has been playing spider-man since it's the best experience ever I've, I've heard so many good things about that my brother-in-law has it i think he's beaten it all the way through i'm totally jealous point where I, if i could find a cheap playstation 4 i would probably pick it up just to play that whole thing mm. so but now if i can play fortnite on it too <laughs> i'm really afraid to click on this link <laughs> like i don't want to hit play on the video that goes with this next article uh in the doc i don't know if you have that pulled up there <laughs> i'm just gonna read this um this is shared by riz as well so we know what he was doing this week uh, a, co- a controversy surrounds a robot sex brothel set to open in Houston. Um, this looks like it's the local news channel, uh, uh, KQ, as in Houston, 11. Um, the sex brothel will be open for business in Houston within the next 10 days. Um, and it's by, <laughs> it's, it's from the business partner for the Canadian sex doll rental company, Kinky S Dolls. Um, there's some interesting references to Westworld in there, but you can, um, 
The company apparently already operates a sex robot brothel in Toronto where the dolls rent for $120 per hour. Wait, so wait, 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 I, I just I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> this just sounds scary. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because it's they, someone says the city could deem the business a public nuisance. Uh, maybe. I, I mean, I'm not following. I, I mean, I don't think it's it's that bad. I just I I go instantly to the. How sanitary is this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Not let alone the are they um, sex robots that are going into. So are, the, are they robots or are they just like the real dolls? Is my other question too. That I really shouldn't be thinking this much about at this point. As I'm going to Texas later this week, but I don't think Dallas is anywhere near, um, anywhere near Houston. Let's get okay. Like we gotta sanitize this segment real quick. AirPods <laughs> will help you hear better with a live listen in iOS twelve. I think this is this is big, and I, I mean I've heard a lot of people talk about this. I saw uh, Alex posted this in in the the group. Um, I really like this concept. Now that so this is where you can take your AirPods, put them on a table across the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, or I think it's, you can, no, you can put your phone on the table across the room and use your AirPods to pick up, uh, the mic. Um, I, I think this is big for people with, with, uh, hearing difficulties. Um, our one friend that, the, that comes here often, Brian, uh, he, he has something where he can Bluetooth to his headphone or to his, his, uh, hearing aids uh-huh. from his phone already. So this would just be, kind of be an additional thing that, that you could do with that. Yes. Um, where I'm interested in this is what happens if you leave the device in the room and walk out. It's <laughs> kind of like a remote listening. Spies device. are also interested in this. <laughs> the CIA. That, that, that it's an like, it's it's an interesting piece for that too. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I think this is this is a really really good idea. And it, it seems like it seems like Apple always takes a really good play on accessibility. Um, and I think this is just one more thing to add to that repertoire. Producer Missy says there is a uh, there is a uh, market for hearing impaired spies now. <laughs> there you go. Serious suggestion: if you text someone daily from Dave Podner here, um, an article he shared. Have you looked at this here, Chilla? I have not. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm pulling something up. I was uh, I was preparing for the ad and I didn't get this one. Um, What's that? Oh, I see. I, I am I am opening the wrong article. Is my problem? And I'll be honest with you. So the Siri suggestions are not only um, based on time of day; they're also location based. Really? Yes. So see, I haven't even um, I haven't looked through these yet so so and it's seriously as easy as swiping down on your phone okay so you're gonna search for something so his picture like it it popped up uh sent a message to his wife yes so it's reminding him to contact his wife it's not remember it's not it's not reminding him to do that as far as i know and and maybe he um can clarify to be fair i do have so mine so here's the context of my life and how Siri thinks I'm ordering things. It wants me to resume my episode of 83 Weeks with Eric Bischoff uh, podcast. And then after that, send a message to Missy Sorg. Right. Yes. So, but it's 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 time, time of day, day of week, and, okay. lo- and current location. I never noticed this because I always pull it down. I never, I never stick around. I mean, if I'm going into that page, it's to look up an app or see, you know, grab a recent one or something like that, right? But that, that. That it's not your recent apps. It's what it thinks you want to use at that given oh. point in time. So based even on that, that, that kind of list up there. I'm getting waved at. Thank you very much. 
So Dave, Dave, so Dave normally texts his wife when he leaves work. Okay, we we really got to get her a mic. Um, so so yeah, like I like how like Google would say, like uh, it's it's five minutes to McDonald's. That's when you know you've mm-hmm. gone to McDonald's too frequently. Uh, <laughs> for instance, so man, there needs to be a coffee place here. But I'll be honest with you, like a lot of times, because I don't even go in because I have a lot of my apps and folders and across multiple pages and whatnot. If it's something that I do in that location at that same time of day all the time i have actually gotten in the habit of just swiping down and finding the app in the list of eight eight because it pre-populates eight apps there i just find the app and launch it from there like i am the laziest app launcher person like i don't go through the ui even on my mac right i hit like open apple spacebar to bring up the search and just start typing the app name Here's a question. So you have your you you're across platform Windows and, and Mac. Yeah. Um, by necessity. Do you click the start button and go into programs and find the app in the pull downs, or do you just start oh. typing the app in the search bar? So I mean that's how I, yeah. I that's how I am across every platform. It's like the launcher is no longer a, a necessity for me. I know the app I want to launch. I know where I'm going. I even got into because I have so many assets. Like my search has been the spotlight search has become really not spotlight. Yeah, it is spotlight. The one spotlight. that's in the browser, and not the yep. one where you like uh, uh, Apple shift in a, or Apple space and it pops up. I keep forgetting that's a thing. Um, but whenever I'm looking for assets for old projects and stuff, like that's that's been invaluable to me because mm-hmm. I have all the ten hard drives hooked in and it searches across all of them. Right. Like I need that. Like, hey, where's this file from, you know, this like I was asked for like a, a highlight reel that we did um, two years ago. And I'm just like, I don't remember which drive this is on. You know, that that's been really strong for me. But um, yeah, what will be interesting is when they can index. And, and Microsoft's working on this when they can index the speech to text. So you could actually you you'll actually be able to type in like a sentence and it'll go through all of your videos and find where that was said and what oh. the timestamp is and everything like that. That's where where I think it, it hits next level. Hey, guys, you know what's next level? Pepperoni Our, pizza. Yeah, good friends at Slice on Broadway. You know what's next level? With Slice on Broadway, I show up. I, I'm getting our usual. We get a pepperoni pizza, a large pepperoni from them every week here for the podcast. And I walked away with a stack of pizza. <laughs> oh they hooked us up you know it's nice knowing people and then there's canceled orders uh that they'll uh, hook you up with so uh this was a bad night to for chilla to be the only one in studio actually it was a really good night it was for a really chilla good night yeah to be the only one in studio right uh but no thanks our good friends at slice on broadway taking care of us and supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza uh check them out they're here in the in the neighborhood in beachview right up the street on broadway uh, in the uh, original OG location, as well as PNC Park, home the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the East End and Carne- Carnegie PA locations all around the city. Go check them out. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. And uh, check them out on SliceOnBroadway.com and on Twitter at PGH underscore Slice. All right, Sheila. What? Uh, you mentioned... Uh... No, no, actually, no. I want I want to skip around. Uh, cause I have a couple of video game things I want to touch on here. Uh, and actually since that one thing you're helping me with is so I can, uh, continue my adventure into virtual reality. Um, Oculus quest has a, uh, rift like VR without the wires and uh, battery. Uh, so this, this is the new one that I, I was watching a little bit of the Oculus event the other day and, uh, the quest is their new, um, kind of wireless computerless, but it has, the big thing is, yeah, what was it? The Oculus Go was the one they have out for two hundred dollars. This is about a four hundred dollar one. Now the Go is pretty much if you took your Gear VR, it doesn't have the full six axis, you know, movement or anything like that. Um, this one does. It's not the full end thing that you're gonna want in a, a complete rift for. Um, but this is a wireless, has the six uh, motions of access. And one of the exciting things that they did they did talk about was. Um, they they're they're making a commitment 
you know, much like I think, you know, we have with like Apple and things like that, that across the board, if you make something for an Oculus today, it will work persistently in the future, right? Like there's an app platform. Because I always wonder about that. Because if I got like if I got like the Oculus Go, am I going to be able to play all of the Oculus um, uh, Gear VR games that I've picked up so far, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and some of them, and I think they already do that a little bit. That they're a bit cross compatible. They have the usual um, controllers, so you know, kind of that hand movement uh, representation is going to be represented on this four hundred dollar device. And again, you don't need to. This does not hook up to a computer. This is a standalone device. Um, so you don't, because that, that's a big thing for me. Is I haven't wanted to contribute a PC and bump that up in order to use something like this. Yeah, and I think to, to your point about the app catalog, I think that's going to be that's huge. I'm also interested in, I I mean I don't know what your thoughts are on the the Gear VR. I really like the UI, mm-hmm. like the menuing system. Oh, it is. Yeah, integration with you know seeing. And you're still at this point still using a gear, a gear VR, right? Yeah, yeah. And I have I actually have the hand pointer. I thingy. do too, but that is it's kind of more. It kind of feels a little more Wii modey. Yeah, like it, I keep, feels it keeps Wiimote. losing where it is and everything, but it's enough that if you're playing like a, well, no, a little less so because you see it in real space. You see it in real space. You, you see which lose, way it's pointing. Yeah, like but, I played the one. It was like a firing. You're in like a firing range, or you're with the zombies like dead, uh, dead and buried. I think it is. No, I played the one that was like you could pick different guns, and you were in like one of those police training simulators oh, okay. where like the, the people would pop like a, out, like a Hogan's Alley, or yeah, something. like a Hogan's Alley. Um, and I, I really enjoy it. It's, it's, it's one of those things that it's fun to, to run through a couple games quickly. And this, uh, I don't have it on for hours, but no, no, no. Yeah. It's, it's, it's well, definitely, this is the cool thing that they're doing with the quest experience. And they're showing this a little bit in this engadget video that we're talking about. Um, and I think this might be what they're, they're kind of doing some of that, uh, star, star Wars stuff we were talking about for Disney. Um, there, so like dead and bury the, the kind of old West zombies shooting up, shoot them up game. Right. Like they were, they were just shown a little bit ago, like people ducking behind things. So it's like a laser tag. Like there's boxes, and the boxes are there in real space. But you're playing the game. I mean, I that's, think that's cool. That's super. And I've, I've I've heard different cities doing setups where they're it's like a run through a Ghostbusters. So mm-hmm. the rooms mm-hmm. are set up with the objects, mm-hmm. and you can touch and feel the the things that they then show up in VR. Um, I think they're doing it with Star Wars now, to your point. Um, I think this is going to, I think this is super fun. This is awesome. Can't wait to, I, I, I'm thinking like that's, that's the upgrade point where this is kind of a more realistic thing to get into, right? Um, at $400, but still that's, that's better than the rest. That's thing. not a bad price. No, it's not. What I'm interested in, and I didn't see it. In I mean, it's article. versus a console, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, to me, I, this is just another the, console. The PlayStation VR itself was... 200 250 i'm impressed with the um the screen resolution what was it 14 Uh, i was impressed with the screen resolution the one question that i did have was um i completely lost my train of thought I'm not gonna lie. That's right. If it comes back, I got something else for you. Did you play Doom Two back in the day? I did play Doom Two back in the day. Are you interested in playing Doom Two, Battle Royale style like Fortnite? Everything is better with Battle Royale. Sixty-four player Doom Two. <laughs> this is great. It also made me th- made me think. Okay, where did I pi- Where did I put my copy of Doom Two so I can play this mod? Uh, and I can't remember where I put it. I might end up buying it for five bucks on Steam again. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> well, they have it for Duke Nukem, is the, my question. Oh, uh, I don't know. I remember the Oculus thing. How much space is available on the device? Well, oh, well how many question. copies of Doom 2 can I put on that thing? <laughs> listen, listen, in units of Doom 2, how many can you fit on there? Actually, probably a lot. You could probably fit a lot of Doom 2s on, on like a 16 gig phone, actually. So, yeah, it's, remember, it was the 90s and it was, wasn't it on a floppy disk? Maybe a CD ROM at the time? Doom 2, I think I had on floppy. It may have been two floppies to load the whole thing, but... So that's a whole maybe three megs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the one game they've put on the Mac, the Mac 
Touch Bar. I mean, they've put Doom yes. everywhere. Yes. All right, Chilla, did you go to Best Buy to see if we could pull off this little stunt? The the the, the funny part about this the, the the story we're about to talk about was the Elgato capture device that you have. Do you have the HD60? Yeah, the hold on, I got it right here. The HD60. Uh, yeah, this guy right here. Yeah. So funny enough, the uh, that exact same thing happened when I purchased that device. <laughs> Wait, really? I went in. I went in because I knew they were gonna be selling that yeah. Elgato HD60. Yeah. And they price marked down the prior version of that, which was like an HD. It was like a 30 frame per second instead of 60 frame per second. Okay. But I'm, for what I was doing, I was trying to do documentation of setting up a pc and like to get pre-boot screens and all yeah, of that kind it, of you stuff need, you need the input you need i need the hdmi out and i need it captured so i'm like 30 frames a second to do that not bad right so i walk in and they have the banner card with the discount price and they're all hd 60s which isn't about to be released for a week <laughs> <laughs> so I got my HD 60 marked down before it was even supposed to launch. So fast forward, that was probably like two years ago. Fast forward to this week, Best Buy, if you go and you're looking for a Chromecast, it sounds like they've stocked their shelves with the next gen, which isn't due out till next week. Mm -hmm. And because uh, Google's making its announcement of all kinds of new stuff on October 9th. And they've been le they've been kind of alluding to the fact that there's going to be a new Chromecast. Um, yep, Best Buy had them on the shelves, same thirty five dollar price. Jeez, a uh, week or over a week. Yeah, well, they, they, they I, just I saw they just saw it was week. listed. I, I was listening to them talking about this on the tech, uh, Daily Tech News show. Uh, they saw it was listed as thirty five dollars. They couldn't find a SKU, so they just put it against the current SKU. For it, and he walked out with it, and then, and then apparently he couldn't use it because it requires a a, a, a apparently it requires a new version of the Google Home app on your phone <laughs> that isn't out yet because they haven't even announced it yet. So, um, yeah, that's hopefully Google will help him out and ship him a pre-release what, Google Home. What app. is this? Like, remember when people were like committing espionage in order to get like pre-release iPhones? And then, and then now we can just walk into a Best Buy and like, oops, guess well, that's not. So this is to be why, here. if you look at the Apple supply chain, mm -hmm. this is why their supply chain is so strict, mm -hmm. and none of those devices are shipped until the day of release. I mean, you rarely, you may hear about someone getting a device, a, like the afternoon before the intended launch date, but that's that's you've pre-ordered it they've already made their announcement i mean they're real companies are very strict on their supply chain and this is why you don't ship your devices pre-ship your devices weeks in advance no this happens with video games yes this happens with video games because they'll be pre-shipped and depending on how scrupulous the uh people in a best buy or a GameStop may be um, like that's why we have like night, you know, midnight sales or sales that happen at eight, eight the morning before or the day before, or or hey, I went to I went to this this you know uh, uh, magic entertainment or something, and uh, oh yeah, I got it like like five days early, you know. So I mean, they get them, they're told not to release them, <laughs> but they're they're gonna make their way on the shelves because they're gonna make money. Yep. Oh, that's what counts, right? But it, and and that's why I think, and I've heard of a of a couple titles on Xbox don't actually uh, in the even then in the days of the disc, the disc wouldn't function because it had to check in with Xbox Live. The game didn't even function until the launch. So even if you had the the disc, and this is same thing with Microsoft now, right? And I'm, I'm guessing PlayStation does it as well. If you pre-order the game for download, mm -hmm. it trickles down to your your device. So over it's sitting time. there, taking so it's on. sitting there, yeah. but nothing works mm -hmm. until twelve oh one a.m. on release day. Yeah, and I, I'm guessing. I mean, software that's a little bit easier to control now, but things like this hardware, you really have to pay attention to your. But it's chain. not like he's using it, but because he can't. <laughs> so, like the incentive, other than I got a picture of it, and I mean, not that it looks much different than. 
the Chromecast that I have connected to this TV here. Um, so yeah. this is, to me, this is an interesting device because it has stronger Wi-Fi, and I'm interested to see what they do with Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm going back to my main gripe with Chromecast is it needs to be able to run on its own, self-sustained. So it would be interesting if the Bluetooth kind of gave you a remote and there was a basic UI that could get you into the Play Store um, to launch applications right on the device. Be interesting to see. Um, let's see here. What else? Uh, what else? Microsoft? Are you interested in? Give us, give us the best of the best here. The best of the best. To round so us out the, for one the, the episode. One of the things. So I'm interested. Well, actually. We'll just make a, an interesting comment. So go to the um, Cortana in your ears. Mm -hmm. So Microsoft la launched wireless Surface headphones, and they're they're pitching them as Cortana being built in. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously on the, the, the AirPods series built in. There, and if Googles, you're on if you're on audio, by the way, G pods. They kind of look like the skull, like skull candies. Um, but with a Windows logo, <laughs> <laughs> um, but gray. So Cortana's on board, so it'll be just like you're in. Uh, what's the guy from Halo? Master Chief. Matt, you, you'll be just like Master Chief. Mm -hmm. Cortana will be in your ears. Life's good. The one thing, the price is a drawback to these for me. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Jeez. They are Bluetooth, so they will work with Apple devices, Google devices windows mac whatever which i thought was pretty cool um what the hell is this they're layout? doing noise cancellation which i thought was was cool what is this layout shot that i'm looking at are those like attachments or uh, can you like can what you looks like color inside? them i don't well, there's know some lightning yeah or is that all the devices that can connect i i don't know what that picture is i don't that's weird but um it, it just looks like like maybe the inside scattered about or their add-ons. I, I don't know. What to say. The, the one thing I do like about these devices is when you take them off, any like music that you're playing or a movie or whatever will auto pause. Hmm. And when you put them back on, it'll resume. This may not sound like a big deal where I find this to be huge is I actually have a pair of is it Plantronics Blackwire 9. 30. It's a wired USB headset, um, dual ear noise cancellation. They're not completely over the ear. They're kind of the, just sit on your ear, mm -hmm. but they're actually, there's pressure sensitivity in them that if my, if I take, if I get a phone call, when I put them on my ears, it picks up the phone call. So it's kind of like a, you're picking up your phone and it auto picks up. Mm -hmm. Like when you take it off, what in the olden days, when you would take the, Set what off. is this world <laughs> that you thing, speak of? The, the the phone it automatically picked up. Um, you you say hello, how are you doing? Unlock. How are you doing there, chap? But yes, <laughs> but it was. It, I really like it, right? Because I leave my headphones next to me on my desk for for phone calls for work. You, I the phone rings, I put them on, and boom, I don't have to hit anything, find the window, nothing. It just picks up. So. I think this is a big deal, and I hope that they do more with that pressure pressure sensitivity feature. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is it is this them getting into their Beats AirPods kind of thing, and they just can't do it as sexy as everybody else? I mean, the device it looks pretty nice. I'll be it, interested. No, 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 no. It looks like your Surface on your lap with a Windows logo. How? <laughs> but on your ears. But on your ears. Yes. Yeah. I feel listen, like listen, all of these. Listen, listen. We know that Crazy Kraus is already a superstar at the Microsoft events. We, we talked about that before the show. Uh, but you know, is, he, is, is this like, <laughs> is this like when you go to an Apple event and you just see all the logos in the crowd, like the Glow logos, or just like you see everybody with their 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 uh, uh, Windows logo on the side? I, I don't mean the. <laughs> but I mean, look at. But it, I think it's. I definitely think it's a marketing. It, is ploy. this gonna be? Is, is there a point? Is it happening? That that Windows logo, like the surface on your lap right now, is that going to become a status symbol, like the glowy window does, the glowy Apple does, which doesn't even glow anymore. Never mind. But but it, look at the AirPods, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was like one of the major By the things way, about what um, driving World around Cup. the campus areas and and like a lot of the city, 
you see a lot of AirPods in people's ears. And there is no logo on that. And there's no logo. But there's no mistake in what but that it's, device yeah, it's is ident- or isn't. It's identifiable. <laughs> yes. Just like the just like the, the, the Apple headphones always have been, mm-hmm. right? Nothing. Okay, some, some things try to look like it, but yeah. don't buy those. They don't work. Trust me. Yeah, <laughs> that, that you had to know which side the mic, mic piece was on to, to know whose brand it was. Yeah, exactly. Or was the is the is the uh, wire rounded, or is it kind of like a flat <laughs> cable? Oh. Um, but yeah, but I think it's one of those things where if you see these, you're gonna if you start seeing these pop up, they're gonna be very identifiable as to what they are. Super super geek. The the, the only other thing I the only other thing I'll say is if you go to the Surface Pro Six. Oh yeah article and you scroll just a little bit down till you see the picture of the actual surface pro i have to laugh at the background on the, the backgrounds they picked wait, for their wait, screens wait, 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 for launch wait, 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 wait. Like you already passed it oh up here in this, in this one no up oh this guy here see the background is like that cloud of paint color <laughs> what is that that's like a total apple it's like off. a poofy uh cloud of color kind of situation i guess but it's the same thing that made it look like the color explosions on the last on two oh. iphones ago oh. um so i don't know it's interesting to see what they're doing in their marketing pictures mm-hmm. and how close they're getting to apple they're definitely going with spec bumps because they're going with the uh, eighth gen intel everything's going to be quad core because there's no more dual core um prices starting 8.99 i can't remember they look nice Um, these these do look nice listen if i'm going to get a laptop i'm going first party at this point right i'm going to well i guess google doesn't make laptops they do with the pixel yeah Yeah, pixel like i I, like if i want something of quality i'm going to go to the source and and generally are not the best built laptops the microsoft ones in that category just like, I'm why would I'm I? Yes. I'm actually super. How is that Gatorade? It is delicious. <laughs> um, I highly recommend the fruit punch. Um, no, I, I've actually, and, and Kraus, this one's for you. If you're still listening. I mean, I have a Surface Pro mm-hmm. and I will say I really, really like it. Um, yeah. I have the, I don't have the new one that came out. Today, no, no. How much do the pros run these days? So. I would hi- here's the weird thing that I do not understand hmm. the price because you can bundle the device right so you have there's the device that's just the screen then there's you can usually get it bundled with a keyboard and then there's the stylus pen whatever you want to call it um, I think they call it the pen um, but the prices fluctuate all throughout the year. Uh, maybe in November we'll cover this in our Black Friday <laughs> conversation. Um, the prices heavily fluctuate, and interestingly enough, usually the best discounts are going direct through Microsoft. Really? Like you can like I've seen I've seen Costco have the same sales as Microsoft within like a dollar or two. Jeez. But Microsoft will run a deal on the Microsoft store that you can't get at like Best Buy. Like it's and it, when we're I'm not talking like five bucks, I'm talking like a hundred dollars plus a free keyboard. Like it's ridiculous the price difference. So I would say wait for them to go on sale and you could probably get the mid range device with a keyboard for eight ninety nine ish, seven ninety. I think I got this one device with ram up with a ram upgrade the 100 i only got the 120 gig i think or maybe it's the 256 i got it for like 7.99 on sale um but it was like a limited special bundle deal direct through microsoft Hmm. but but to me it's like with the mac you like the price, even the prices on sale are usually like five dollars cheaper, yeah, and you're not, yeah, yeah. unless you're going refurb or yeah. purchasing from someone. Ooh, refurb! I gotta look at refurb. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, the price is all over the map. 
and I just got the 128 gig because I threw a 128 gig SD card in it. That's why I wanted. So so moved all my personal files of, over to that. And I kind of want like more and more. I want to get my hands on a Surface Pro and see how how I live with it. They're gonna do so now. They're doing one of the things they announced today too was the lease program. And it's not program? it's not really a lease program. Okay, but it's a to me a zero percent loan. Mm. Um, the I think that it starts at twenty five dollars a month. Oh, and that gets you a Surface. I could see that. Oh, okay, we're we're going and too far. Office, we need to roll out of this. Yeah, but, sorry, and but Office three sixty five. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going. I'm, well, I'm going deep cuts too because I'm just like maybe that could be a nice studio computer. It's a portable. Like I use this laptop, and it's like, well, like I, I you know, using this this touchscreen laptop, I forgot how awesome it is to have that nice scroll when I'm showing you our next ad with the touchscreen right there. Our good friends there with, uh, 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 of course, Alex, Alex Carr is Media and Design, who usually uh, we talk about his services, but it's a very special month. He has a side project of OccupyProWrestling.com we talk about on our other podcasts, but they want to show their support to a uh, good cause for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we'd love to have you as part of it when you buy merch at whatamaneuver.net. 50% of all normal merchandise pre-orders will go to the Breast Cancer uh, Research Foundation. But wait, there's more. We're finally releasing merch. They, we, I got to work on my context here. They're finally releasing merch with their logo. And uh, they even have it in pink and 100% of the proceeds from those items will go to the uh, Breast Cancer Research Fund. You can check out all the Occupy Pro Wrestling gear at whatamaneuver.net. And uh, links, of course, over at uh, OccupyProWrestling.com and get more info on the Breast Cancer Research Foundation at BCRF.org. So once again, our good friends over there at uh, Alex, Alex Carr's Media Design and OccupyProWrestling.com uh, doing something really cool for a great cause. So shout outs to them. So I don't have any calendar items for this month. Hey, um, actually, there is some stuff. Um, I, I think we'll, there'll be some more information soon, but there's, I know there's a, a thing out there. Uh, on Halloween, uh, Beachview is going to be the place to be. You guys here locally. Um, there is, ooh, lightning is light happening show. right now. Um, but our good friends at uh, Tolan FX, we're going to have to get, we got to get Steve on the show. Actually, he's going to be here Thursday, I just found out, for another podcast. But uh, our friends at Tolan FX doing some movie special effects basically a uh, block up from us um are going to be part of the george romero days that got announced uh katie was an old time zombie for the announcement uh, if you want to see on her instagram or scarehouse's instagram um but uh they're going to be an ad recently was she they was well, she's part of the pittsburgh zombies ad too okay was, yeah okay and, and she made the front page of the uh postgazette.com okay Yes. Yes. She's everywhere. She's everywhere. <laughs> Usually as a zombie, but, <laughs> um, but anyways, and they were at the hang out with bunny at uh PodCon as well. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, uh, no, there's a George Romero days. that's going to be happening. They've been closing down the street. There's going to be, um, uh, uh, skin suspensionists that I saw at the gathering. Those ones are coming, uh, fire, fire breathers. Um, there's going to be, uh, when and where is this? pro wrestling, um, uh, Halloween night, Wednesday, Halloween night. And and there's going to be trick or treat, and we're working on some stuff around trick or treat as well. There's just going to be a Halloween par- block party um, here at the uh, end of the block here from the studio, and we'll probably be doing some stuff too here um, uh, around that. So please go check it out. Um, look up. I'll get the official name for you to search here on Facebook so you can find more information, and we'll of course be talking about it here throughout the month. Um, uh, just look for George Romero days in uh, Tolan FX for that. Also, um, we're um, we've been filming a little bit of this, um, but there's a cool event, uh, not one for everybody to come down to, but if you're in a Beachview area, there's a Keller Beachview workshops that are happening. There's a a, a woman that does um, kind of light art, like they she puts LEDs on her and and and, and or other other people and they like make digital art out of it and they're going to be doing an art installation here at the at the other end of the block at the senior center uh so i'm going to have more information of that as we um kind of attend these and, and kind of see the process in action and, and there's going to be a little bit of video around that as well uh through another resource um so there are a lot of events happening actually and of course we'll have our usual game nights and everything announced very soon if you guys want to join us in studio for that and we've been doing a lot of twitch stuff with our pro wrestling friends as well had a lot of fun playing jackbox 
um, on Sunday night, or I'm sorry, on Friday night with uh, Brohemoth and uh, Billy Ruxpin, our imaginary friend, and uh, Tatiana Rose uh, and, and other friends uh, on that as well. So thanks to everybody that's been watching that and participating with that as well. John Chichilla, chillatech.net. Josh Chill on the Facebook, Chilla on the Twitter. At Sawyer Chill on the Twitter, SawyerChillMedia.com for all the great podcasts that are going on around here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, producer Missy. Thank you, our chat room people. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.